Guys, I just sat here for 30 minutes and recorded my wrap up and I never pressed the recording button. So welcome. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Rose and this is Flower Reads A Lot. So uh, as you could tell by the title, this is my March wrap up. I actually wasn't going to do a March wrap up because I've been trying to do them every other month, but some of the books that I read this month, I'm just really excited to talk about. So here they are. Before we actually get into it, we can talk about some of my reading stats for this month. I only read seven books. So on the lower side for quantity wise, but honestly, it doesn't matter how many books you read a month, like we're all busy, it's okay if you read one book a month, if you read 20 books a month, like it's okay, we're all just people, okay? In these seven books, I actually only read two thrillers, which was very shocking for me. Well, thriller horror books, and I typically read way more than that. That's what makes up most of my reading month, but wow, only two. I read two weird, smut books. Oh, we'll talk about them. <laughs> we'll talk about them. One high fantasy book, one literary fiction book, which I never read literary fiction, and one collection of poems, which I also never read poems. So this was a very diverse reading month for me in genre wise, because I just don't typically read, like I said, literary fiction, poetry, the two romance books I've been reading. So it was very interesting. Also, I read one of my favorite books of all time this month. So even though I only read seven books, I feel like it was a successful month. We'll start with the one book that I decided not to rate, and that is the collection of poems that I read, Into the Forest and All the Way Through by Cynthia Palayo. Now, this collection of poems was very hard to read. I was very intrigued whenever I first saw it. I saw it on Kindle Unlimited and it stood out to me because it is a collection of poems based on true crime, based on the hundreds of missing women and girls in the United States. Now, there is a very fine line when it comes to true crime, when it comes to creating true crime content and also consuming that content. And I never want to cross that line. There have been a few creators that I've watched or listened to on podcasts that I felt very icky afterwards and I didn't want to watch or listen to them again because to me it felt like they were making true crime content solely for entertainment, not really to discuss the facts of a case or to bring light to a victim or to try to get information for anyone that was out there that maybe had information. So like I said, it's definitely a, a fine line and I, I don't ever want to cross that line, especially when I'm consuming it. I want to just be consuming true crime content in order to be informed, to learn about these victims, to understand and make myself aware of what's out there. And so I read these poems and I honestly felt like it was done tastefully. Now I did look at some of the reviews for this book and not everybody thought the same. Some people did not think that this was made very tastefully. And so we all do have our different opinions, but I really felt like it was done well. I appreciated that this author put the names of the women after each of these poems, put the name when they went missing or when their remains were found, where and who you can contact if you have any information about it in order to help solve their cases. And there were even some in here that were Jane Doe's that don't even have their name out there. They're, they haven't even been identified. There was a case in there that was very famous in 2020, Vanessa Guillen. And I actually grew up in that military base and reading the poem that was based off of her, that one really got to me. Now, I don't mean to get very emotional <laughs> with this, but it just, it made me very emotional reading about these women because it's an epidemic in our country and honestly everywhere. So I, I thought it was very important and I didn't enjoy my time reading it, but I am glad that I read it 
Now, I can't really speak to the quality of the actual poems inside because I don't really know much about poetry other than what I learned in like middle school and high school. I don't read any poetry ever. This is like the first poem I've read in probably 10 years. So I don't really wanna to speak to the quality of it, but it did make me feel emotional. And I feel like that's what poetry is about is to evoke emotion from you. And I feel like, like I said, this content was done tastefully and I don't feel like it crossed that line in true crime content. But I did not feel comfortable rating this book because it was based off of actual women and girls that were missing or murdered. So I don't ever want to, to rate a book like that. Now, on a lighter note, I did not read any one or two stars this month. Everything is three stars or higher. And we'll start with my craziest three star because why would I rate this three stars? You would expect me to rate this like one or two stars, but no, alas, I didn't. This is Don Juan Velociraptor by Lola Foss. You heard that right. You're seeing that right with your eyes. This is a uh, dinosaur erotica novel. <laughs> so if you're like, Rose, how could you possibly give this book three stars? Listen, I'm going to read to you my review, okay? One star for the absolute gall to write such a story one star for trying to have a tinge of a plot, and one star for not subjecting me to descriptions of any sort of dino D. Now, this book <laughs> was extremely short. It was like 60 pages, maybe even less than that. This followed a journalist who was going to interview this infamous dinosaur, Don Juan, and oh my gosh. So this dinosaur, and he's not a shifter, no. He's a dinosaur, he's a velociraptor. He has the mind of a man because he was created in a science lab, okay? And ever since he was created, he has brought out the desire in women and seduces literally every woman that he meets. And they're just enthralled by him. They're overrun with desire, like they cannot resist him. So this girl, she's like, well, I'm gonna resist him. I'm not like other women. Okay, girl, okay. And there's actually this little like side plot slash main plot going on in the book that I was like, okay, she was trying. She fit a lot into the 60 page book. Like, come on, this is not for everyone, but if you want to experience what I experienced, then um, read it. <laughs> My next three star is a little disappointing that it's only three stars, but I still enjoyed my time with it. It was Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. This book follows these group of girls that are getting together to do a seance, and one of the friends starts acting a little crazy after the seance. I'm talking, speaking a different language that she didn't even know before, bleeding out of different places, like, it's a little crazy and it follows the events after that. This book was honestly so good. I love the story. I love the friendship in this book. The, there were themes of like religion in this book as well. And it was cool because it took place in Texas and I grew up in Texas. So I don't know, I just, I really love this book. I could relate to some of the things that were happening in this book. However, the reason why it's a three star for me is because I wanted more. This book was very short and I feel like it could have been longer. I didn't feel satisfied with the ending of this story. And I just, I feel like it just needed more. I don't know how it could have done more, but I just needed it. So yeah, <laughs> these next three books are all of my four star books. We will start with the craziest four star that I have and it is Stay in My Swamp by GM Ferry. Yes, you're seeing that correctly as well. <laughs> this is the second book to Get in My Swamp and it is literally just Shrek 2, but make it X-rated. It's literally Shrek 2. Why am I still reading these? They're just so entertaining, I can't stop. <laughs> No, this was not a five star, even though it was just as crazy as the first book. 
this just didn't have the shock factor anymore. I'm just not shocked at this point of the things that are happening. Like, sure, there's a sex club in here. Sure, GM Fairy is gonna be in the book. Sure, this is gonna happen. Like, of course. So if you like weird smut books, read it. This next four star was an unexpected read for me. I actually was in LA one weekend in March and I went to a Barnes and Noble there because I needed like a very short read. My I didn't have my iPad with me to just read something on there. So I decided to buy a short little book and I saw this and I was like, oh, this looks interesting. It is called Signs Preceding the End of the World by Yuri Herrera. This is translated work from Spanish and it is, like I said, literary fiction. It is about this girl who is going to cross the border from Mexico into the United States in order to find her brother. And it's just the things that happen in this book, you really feel for this girl. The way that this book is written is very unique as well. There are no quotations in this book for dialogue. It's just written in a way that I can't really explain. You have to experience it, but it's not like any other book that I've ever read. Like I said, it is very short, but I feel like it has just so many discussions in it that I can't even articulate all of the things that happen in this book. I really enjoyed it though. I was never bored a time in this book. I feel like it evoked emotion out of me. It was really good. My last four star is The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. She did it again, she did it again. This book was so good. I can't. It was so good. So this was actually a book club pick for the book club that I have with my friends here and I loved it. I picked this one out and I don't have time to for that. But it was very long, very traumatic, but I loved the story. I don't think I could just give it a five because it didn't give me a five feeling but there's nothing in this book that I would change. So this book opens up with these two sisters experiencing a terrible tragedy that just ruins their family, honestly. And then it flashes forward to current day where one of the sisters is a lawyer and then she experiences another tragedy and witnesses it. And it kind of just tackles a story of sisters, a story of family, the justice system in this town. It is so good, but it is so traumatic as Karen Slaughter's writing is. If you have any triggers, you need to read the trigger warnings for this book because it has a lot in there and they're very descriptive. You feel like you are experiencing what the characters are experiencing. You feel like you are there with them. Now, I've seen a lot of people say like they didn't care for the ending or they didn't really feel satisfied with it or it wasn't like a huge plot twist or whatever, but I still enjoyed it. I don't think I would change what happened. I don't think it needed some crazy big reveal because the story was so good. Now my last and final book was actually the first book that I read this March and it was for the podcast. It is Blood Over Bright Haven by ML Wong. This book is so good. I love this book. This is probably one of my new favorite books ever. It is a high fantasy. It opens up with Tamil and his family and it opens up with a bang, okay? His family is trying to flee from this blight that is literally unraveling people and seeking refuge in this city that is unaffected by this blight. And, oh, I won't tell you what happens there, but it happens in the first chapter. And then in the very next chapter, we meet Siona, who is actually on her way to go take the test to become the very first woman high mage. Now this is important because in this place, in this government, in this city, a woman can only test to become a high mage every 10 years. So you're already seeing a theme of misogyny and sexism here. So that's one of the themes it tackles. We've got xenophobia, we've got religion, we have a corrupt government. Like it just has everything. It has everything in this book. And this book is so infuriating. It is so heartwarming, heart-wrenching. 
it's just, it's so good, it's so good. I love it so much, like I can't praise it enough. I just feel like Emma Wong's writing is just so good. Her storytelling is so good, I love it. And this is a standalone, so you don't have to wait to see for the uh, next book in the series, no. This has a complete beginning and a complete ending, and the beginning and the ending, the parallels between them, so poetic, so beautiful so tragic like i love it thank you guys for watching my short little wrap up of march please let me know down below what you guys read this march let me know if you have a new favorite like i do or maybe you didn't have the best reading month but let me know your tbr too for the next month so uh, yeah like this video subscribe if you haven't and i will hopefully see you next time okay love ya bye